Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel in this video today we reacted to the JAS-39 Gripen how Sweden built the world's best non-stealth fighter jets so I've done a reaction to the main Swedish submarines so I thought I'd do a reaction to the more military vehicles from Sweden and we're going to react to the fighter jet today I've heard it's meant to be very impressive so let's get right into the reaction video for today let's go I find these videos so interesting you are probably familiar with famous jets like the U-2 F-16 Falcon or F-22 Raptor. Okay, I'm, I've definitely heard of the F-22 Raptor before. The other two, I haven't heard of. But the F-22 Raptor, I have heard of. Globally, these multi-role combat jets are well known for their superior features and offensive capabilities. But have you ever heard of the Saab JAS-39 Gripen? I haven't, Gripen? Nope. Though not as famous as its U.S. counterpart, the Swedish fighter jet should not be underestimated when it comes to systems and capacity. Well, how amazing is it really? Manufactured by the Swedish aerospace and defense company Saab AB, JAS-30... Oh, Saab AB. I haven't, I haven't seen them cars in ages. I remember they used to be really big. I don't know if they still exist over in Sweden. But we don't really have them in the United Kingdom anymore. I remember they be, used to be huge in the early 2000s. I used to like the look of them, though. They used to look really cool. 39 Gripen is a light, single-engine, multi-role combat aircraft in service with the Swedish Air Force. The Gripen features a delta wing, which is a wing shaped in the form of a triangle. It also has a canard configuration with negative stability design and fly-by-wire flight system, replacing the conventional manual flight controls with an electronic interface. By 2020, more than 200 Gripens of various models A to F have been developed. That's a lot. That is a lot. First, let's dig into the history of the JAS-39 Gripen. The development of JAS-39 Gripen began when Sweden sought to build new fighters to replace its aging Saab 35 Draken and Saab 37 Vigen in the late 1970s. For a defensive dispersed basing plan in the case of invasion, the Swedish Air Force needed a cheap Mach 2 aircraft with good short field performance. The concept included 800 meter long by 17 meter wide primitive runways from the Base 90 system. One goal was to make the plane smaller than the Vigen while maintaining or increasing its payload range performance. The Saab 38, also known as the B-3LA, was proposed as an attack aircraft and trainer. I can't lie, with a camo, that looks so cool. But most surprising thing about this video is that Saab, I know if I'm making cars, I didn't know they made fire jets. I don't know if they stopped making cars and now they just make fire jets exclusively. But that definitely did surprise me about this video. And the A-20, a modification of the Vigen, was proposed as a fighter, attack, and maritime reconnaissance aircraft. The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, and the Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark were among the foreign designs which were studied and taken as references. In 1979, the Swedish government commenced a study for an all-around platform capable of JAS, which stands for Aerial Warfare, Close Air Support, as well as Reconnaissance, indicating multi-role capabilities to satisfy various roles during missions. A number of Saab designs were reconsidered, with Project 2105 being the most favorable, recommended Ooh, to the government by the Defense Material Administration. Then, in the 1980s, the industrial arm of the Swedish Armed Forces consisting of several big corporations like Saab Scania, L.M. Ericsson, and Volvo Flagmotor established the JAS Industry Group as a joint venture. Oh, okay, so I guess that's why it's called the JAS-39 Gripen, because all these companies come together to make JAS. Okay, that kind of makes a lot of sense. The Gripen was first rolled out by Saab on April 26, 1987, at the company's 50th anniversary. The first flight on December 9, 1988, was actually delayed by 18 months due to some issues with the flight control system. Problems concerning the aircraft's avionics, particularly the fly-by-wire flight control oh. system, FCS, and the relaxed stability design appeared during the test program. This problem caused the prototype to crash during an attempted landing at Linkoping on February 2, no. 1989, with the test pilot Large Rydstrom surviving with a broken elbow. Pilot-induced... Wow. 
he is so lucky that he survived that. That looked like a horrible crash. I'm so glad he survived. Oscillation was determined as the cause of the crash, which was caused by issues with the FCS's pitch control routine. Following the crash, the Saab and U.S. firm Calspan introduced software-related modifications to the aircraft. A partnership agreement between Saab military aircraft and British Aerospace was announced during the 1995 Paris Air Show. This cooperation between the two will form the joint venture company Saab BAE Gripen AB with the purpose of adapting, producing, marketing, and supporting Gripen at the international level. The partnership also involves the transfiguration of the A and B series aircraft to the export C and D series, which encourage the Gripen's compatibility with the standard of NATO. Now, let's take a look at the design and features embedded in the JAS-39 Gripen. Okay, this should be one of the most interesting parts of the video, because I have to say the designs of this jet look so nice. Like, just look how nice and just cool it looks. They did a great job in the design. One thing that probably differentiates Gripen from the rest of the 4-plus generation fighters on the market is its small size along with the low cost required It does look smaller than a lot of the aircraft. other jets I've seen, actually. Even though it's difficult to calculate the flyaway cost, the Gripen reportedly had the government spend less than $60 million. Ooh. Gripen also boasted its low operational cost, probably the lowest of any modern fighter jets. Yeah, $60 million does seem quite cheap for a jet, actually, like... I thought they were spending hundreds of millions per jet, so 60 million? That actually seems like a really good deal. For its physical specs, the Gripen could take off at a maximum of 16,500 kilograms and is able to accelerate up to Mach 2. Notable for its supercruise ability, Gripen has a range of approximately 1,500 kilometers. For either beyond visual range missile, BVR, and dogfighting combatants, Gripen is surely at the top of its class. The Gripen has a reputation for being user friendly, with simple displays and a straightforward interface. In terms of lethality, the Gripen was the first fighter in the world to carry the lethal Meteor air to air missile, oh. a beyond visual range BVR weapon capable of tracking and killing targets up to 80 miles away. Wow. The Gripen C is capable of carrying four Meteor missiles, while the Gripen E is capable of carrying seven. Another interesting aspect of the Gripen is the addition of dedicated electronic warfare pods to the Gripen's already allegedly formidable onboard jamming capabilities. According to Saab, this is probably the most advanced EW suite carried by a fighter, making the Gripen a valuable commodity for suppression or destruction of enemy air defense dead missions. The fact that the acronym of this is dead, that is a crazy acronym, I have to say. Wow. Lastly, now let's take a look at the operational history of the aircraft. A total of 204 Gripens were ordered by the Swedish Air Force in three batches. The first delivery was made to the Flyvakmnet on June 8, 1993 during a ceremony in Linkoping. The last of the first batch was sent on December 13, 1996. The first batch 2 sample was delivered to the Air Force on December 19, 1996. The Gripen has been exported to Hungary, the Czech Republic, Thailand, Brazil, and South Africa by Saab. Finland, Canada, Colombia, Botswana, Croatia, India, Indonesia, and the Philippines That's are among the countries. countries that have expressed interest, with another dozen or so countries indicating some interest. Saab has been generally receptive to technology transfer and has made it easier for local companies to participate in the production process of some components. This has made the Gripen an interesting option for governments who struggle to explain where they spent the money to the skeptical public. <laughs> That's a little bit because funny to me. Because of the involvement of British aerospace systems, the United Kingdom has an effective veto over the Gripen's export. Oh. Argentina has been unable to obtain the aircraft as a result of this. On the other hand, in the instance of Switzerland, the Gripen was caught up in the ongoing court case against right-wing agitator Julian Assange, as his supporters rallied against a referendum that would have authorized the Swiss Air Force to buy 22 fighter jets. A 
okay, you have to let me know kind of what's going on with Julian Assange. I'm a bit confused about what kind of happened there and about why they kind of didn't buy the fighter jets and why there was like a petition against that. I'm kind of curious about that. That'd be quite interesting to see. But the fact that it's so cheap as well, 60 million definitely seems like a bargain compared to a lot of the fighter jets I've seen. Costing hundreds of millions, but I guess Saab have really managed to manufacture a fighter jet. It's kind of deadly, that it's smaller, and it has interactive things to make it easier to fly. Obviously, you still need to be very good to fly this fighter jet, but it has a great design, very deadly, great at protecting people, and obviously taking out the enemies. So it's just a very cool video. I kind of like learning about military weapons and just seeing, because some of the technology that goes into these vehicles, some of the stories behind them, some of the missions people have gone on, absolutely insane. The fact that this happens in real life when you think about it, just crazy to think about. So if you guys want more reaction videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.